Hello people of YouTube, it's Deepak here, and welcome to DCS World 2.9.4 and Razbam Simulations F15E Strike Eagle Module. Welcome to Tutorial 9, Lantern Targeting Pod from the Front Seat. Today I'm going to demonstrate the use of the ANAAQ-14 Lantern Targeting Pod, which is a slightly older targeting pod. It's an infrared-only sensor, doesn't have a CCD like some of the modern ones, although it does have a laser, which can be both used for laser designation and laser ranging. It's the only pod currently available in the F-15E, and uh, you can see the standard installation here with its paired uh, terrain-following radar pod. Uh, the, the TGP, or the Lantern, uh, targeting pod is actually on the left engine intake pylon here. So, let's uh, jump into the back cockpit first, because this is where the power switches are for the Lantern. Uh, you can see near the front of the left console, we have TGT FLIR. This panel controls the power for the pod. We have the main power switch, which has settings for on, standby, sorry, off, standby, and on. Uh, during normal startup, you will put it into the standby position. This will trigger a cooldown of the sensor, which will take between five and eight minutes before the sensor will then be available. There are manual adjustments for gain and level here on this panel. They're not currently implemented. You then also have the arming switch for the laser. You're going to need to put this into the armed position before you can make use of the laser. With this done, we can jump into the front cockpit because this is where we'll be doing everything else. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and set the aircraft up in air-to-ground master mode. I'm going to display the air-to-ground radar on the left and I'm going to display the targeting pod, the lantern, on the right. The page for this is T-Pod. So I'm going to click that, and we now have the lantern display. I'm going to focus down on the right DDI here, and I'll go over the symbology that we have in this display. Starting at the top left, we have the current azimuth, elevation, and slant range the pod is looking at. So in this case, I'm currently looking at 000, which means straight ahead. I'm currently looking at aircraft heading. Uh, I'm looking two degrees down, and the slant range to the point I'm looking at is 18.6 nautical miles. This is calculated using the navigational system. It can also take ranging information from the radar, or if we're firing the laser, you can get laser ranging as well. Uh, the next thing that we have is the field of view indicator for the lantern. You see this... Uh, this box here. Uh, if it's near the top forwards, it means the pod is looking forwards and close to the, the horizon. Horizon would be right at the very top edge. Uh, you can then see if the pod is looking left or right or rear, and if it's in the middle, it's looking straight down. Um, so that's what that does. Next, we have the current queuing mode. Uh, it's currently displaying stab for stabilized. That will tend to mean that it's in snowplow. You then have the coordinates and elevation for the point the pod is currently looking at, at the top right here. At the bottom right, you have bullseye information for the point that you're looking at. And at the bottom left, we have magnetic heading, uh, basically showing us the direction of north from the field of view of where the pod is currently looking. We then have the field of view brackets. This will show us, uh, if we switched to the narrow mode, what our field of view would be, and then the crosshair in the middle. We then have controls for the pod uh, on the push buttons around the outside of the display. We have CDES, which means continuous designation. Uh, normally, with the pod, if you move over a point and depress the TDC when in targeting mode, you'll designate that point, but you'll do so in a one-off manner. Of course, if what you're trying to designate is a moving target, something like a vehicle, you can box constant designation and then when you, if you're tracking a target and you press TDC to designate it, it will then continuously designate that point uh, as the pod moves to follow it. Uh, you've got your automatic gain, which currently is not implemented. You then have the toggle to go between white hot and black hot modes, the polarity of the display. You have this toggle between air to ground and air to air modes for the pod. Uh, the manual states that at the present time, air to air mode is not implemented. You then have the cursor function. This controls what happens when you depress the TDC. Currently it's in target. That means it'll create a target designation. You also have modes for queuing. You can create a queue point to which you can then later return using this mode. Mark point, which same way as with the, the radar cursor, you can drop mark points uh, under the, the point you're looking at. And then update. 
Uh, this is used with the, the INS. This is currently not implemented. You can also toggle it into a blank mode where uh, TDC presses will do nothing. This could be handy if you're worried about accidentally pressing it. We'll bring it back to TGT for now. You then have the, uh, the kind of polarity track mode for when you're doing some, usually a point track. Uh, you can have the white point track, black point track, or automatic point track. Yeah, I'm going to leave it in automatic in this case. And then you have the type of track that you want to do uh, when you enter a kind of tracking mode, basically. Uh, you've got area track. This is the same as most modern targeting pods. You have a point track. Again, pretty much the same as most modern targeting pods. And then there's a computed track. Uh, the computed track mode will maintain an azimuth and elevation without actually doing any analysis of the scene. Uh, so this is like a, a fail back, a failover mode. Normally, the system will actually automatically revert to this if it has trouble doing a point or an area track. You wouldn't normally want to manually do this type of track. So I'm going to return it to area track for now. You've then got the normal control to go back to the main menu. You've got the recording control. And then you also have this switch which controls what the controls are. <laughs> controls what the controls are. On the push buttons around the outside. We're currently in T1, which is the normal mode. We can toggle this into T2, and this will allow us to do alignment of the pod, which is currently not implemented, it, although you would do this in real life. Uh, and you also have manual gain adjustments, which are also not available. That's supposed to be done in combination with the grayscale, uh, which is also not implemented. So basically nothing in the T2 mode actually works. Uh, you're going to want to put this back to T1. We then have the standard declutter control, uh, which removes some of the symbology from the pod. Um, you can also, this push button, if you're in a navigational queuing mode, will display nav and the number of the steer point. We'll see that in a moment. You can also enter a steer point on the scratch pad and click this push button to immediately queue to that steer point. And then you have the status and the code for the laser. Um, now, you can actually change this also using the scratch pad. So let's say we want to use code 1655. I can simply press this push button and it immediately changes the code. The status of the laser is also shown down here. We can't currently have a stable L. That simply means the pod is armed. If the, the laser was firing, the L would flash. If the pod was about to be masked, it would have a flashing M. And if it was a steady M, the pod is already masked. So that's uh, everything on there. Next, I'll go over the HOTAS controls. Uh, but before beginning, I will actually press castle hat switch right long. And we now have the command bars and I have control of the pod. Uh, so most of the pod's controls are done on the TDC and the auto act switch. So of course the TDC allows me to slew the pod. You'll note that at the bottom left it gives us information about the slew rate. So the slew rate can be, it gives you the direction you're slewing in and either A, B, C or D for maximum slew rate. Uh, and you'll note that as I release the pod the azimuth elevation and slant range and the coordinates and elevation update. So those are constantly telling me basically where I've pointed the pod, which is quite handy. I can then press the auto act switch forward to change the field of view. By default, we have a wide, which is this, and a narrow field of view. However, there is also an expanded mode here. If I box expanded from narrow, we can go into expanded narrow by pressing auto act switch up again. If I now press auto act switch one more time, we go to wide, again, narrow, again, expanded narrow. If I return to wide and unbox expanded, we now only have wide and narrow. So that's worth noting. If I press auto act switch up long, we will immediately go into snowplow mode. And again, it'll say stab. If I press aft, the pod will return to its last queued position. And we can update what we want as our current queued position with the cursor in queue mode. And uh, if I depress the auto act switch, I can track or untrack. And that will be based on the mode that I have selected here. So I'm currently in area track. If I chose an area on the ground and depressed auto act, you'll see the area track is now boxed. If I come out of active pause, the pod will continue to look at this point on the ground um, as the aircraft maneuvers. I'll go back into active pause for now. Left multifunction switch will fire the laser. You can see the status for the laser goes to lays and the L flashes. 
If we were close enough, the range would also update to a laser-based range as well. I'm going to disable that. TDC press will do the current cursor function. So, for example, if I move my cursor over here and I depress, I've now set a cue point, and I can return to that cue point at any time by pressing auto axe switch aft. So, for example, let's say I've set that as my cue point. I'm going to move the uh, the pod over here. I'm going to press auto axe switch aft and we immediately return to that cue point, which is quite handy. Cooley hat switch up will sequence through our steer points. So the first time I press it, you'll see that the queuing mode switches to nav and it says steer point one. If I go again, I've got steer point two, three, and four. And uh, once we get to the end, that's it. Uh, we can also enter steer points using the scratch pad. So say I want to go back to steer point one, I can press one on the UFC and press this push button and the pod will immediately return to uh, steer point one. Um, if I've designated something using the targeting mode, I can press boat hat switch aft to undesignate, and this works in the same way uh, as it does on the radar. Speaking of the radar, I'll demonstrate queuing from the radar. If I press castle hat switch left long, we now have control of the radar, and if I make sure that I set my radar cursor to Q, I can now move the cursor over something and depress the TTC. You'll note that the pod has immediately turned to that position and it says Q on the radar. You'll also see that the current Q has switched to radar, indicating that that's where we got the Q from. If I do castle hat switch right long, I now have control of the pod again. And I'm just gonna FOV in on here. And let's say that we want to refine that a little bit and we want to use this location here. I can now switch the cursor to target, I can depress the TDC, you see it says designate, and over here on the radar we have the standard target designation um, symbology. If I want to undesignate, as I said, I can press boat hat switch aft, that designation is now gone. I'm going to go ahead and press it again though, that's now designated, we have the symbology. I'm going to go ahead and create some mark points as well. So let's say we, we had additional targets here. I'm going to mark here. It confirms mark one. The UFC also confirms that information. And the radar now displays a mark point indicator as well. As before, uh, the radar will only display the last five mark points that you've created, although you can have up to ten. I'm going to go ahead and move over here and make another mark point. It confirms mark two. And then lastly, I'm going to do mark three. Excellent. I'm going to FOV out for now, and uh, let's go ahead and um, switch to a point track. There we go. And I'm going to depress my auto -axe switch, and we are now tracking. Uh, now, if this was a moving point, of course, it would it would go ahead and move. Uh, and uh, yet again, I can press my uh, multifunction switch on the left, on the throttle, to fire the laser, press it again to stop firing the laser. And that's all the standard stuff that you can do with the targeting pod. Uh, note that there are additional queuing pods coming to the lantern, which are at this time not implemented. We currently don't have the ability to do a TSD queue, a SIT queue, a HUD queue, or an air-to-ground reticle queue. And also the air-to-air -air mode itself entirely is not implemented at this time. So, uh, yeah, that pretty much covers everything currently implemented for the Lantern targeting pod. Okay, thank you very much for watching, everybody. I hope you all enjoyed that. If you haven't already, please subscribe, like, and comment. It's a really big help to me and to the channel. You also have the option of further supporting the channel by joining Deep Hacks Ground Crew. Thank you very much to those of you who've already done so. It's a small monthly fee, approximately the same as the cost of a cup of coffee, and it really helps me in creating this content. Uh, the, the names of those who are already in the Ground Crew are on screen now. Uh, you've got some small benefits in that we have a, a Discord server that we share together, and we also occasionally fly together from time to time. So uh, thank you all very much for watching. Fly safe, and I'll see you all next time.